Yes, people. Hope you are all good. So I just thought I would do a video just to give people an update on my fight. Over the last few weeks, people have been messaging, want to see footage, want to know the result. But as you can probably see with the photo that I won, great experience and uh, something I'm glad I've done. I'll get the fight footage and release it sometime in December. But what an experience. Like I say, every man thinks they can fight. Every man talks a good fight, but it's a whole different ball game to actually go under the ropes and, and have a tear up. I've got a new level of respect for fighters now to, and anyone who is willing to have a fight. Like It's not just a physical battle, it's also a mental battle. The fear of getting beat, the fear of getting embarrassed, knocked out. Like It's a... Uh, you're not just fighting in the ring, you're also fighting with the mindset, the constant negatives and positives fighting against each other. But something I'm glad I've done, something I would not shy away from. And uh, I loved it. I loved that. Obviously, the first few weeks doing that, I'd done a 10-week camp with my good friend Andy McCart at IFL, put me through my paces. I've done a bit of boxing before, done a bit of Muay Thai, but training for a fight is a totally different intensity. Like hitting the pads and stuff, you think you're great, you've got a knockout punch, but the pads don't hit back. So when you actually start sparring, you realise, shit, I ain't as good as what I, I thought. So it's um, the first three, four weeks I was getting frustrated and angry because I was thinking, fuck me, man, I'm, I'm way off the pace here. Especially sparring, like going in sparring, it's a weird feeling. A weird feeling, the first four or five weeks of sparring are... Every time I was outside, I thought, man, I can't be fucked with this tonight because it's it's tiring. But the feeling after a sparring session is is next level. There's no drug in the world that can take you to that height after a, a good sparring session. But after like five weeks of sparring and learning how to get hit, because when you start sparring, like, I'm not a fucking professional boxer. And anybody will tell you that, that um, his does a bit of boxing and stuff and is not a professional it's nerve wracking I don't care who you are I don't give a fuck what you say look for me it was you're nervous so it takes courage to just keep going and going and going to overcome those nerves but the nerves are still always there well I believe anyway but after five weeks because if you start you're tense as well you're very tense and scared of getting hit and scared of getting embarrassed and I'm not daft I know my limits I know what I'm capable of I know what I'm not capable of but after five weeks, I, I was starting to realise, okay, you're kind of not made of glass. Like, then you realise you can take a dig. Then you start relaxing more. And it's by the end of the 10 weeks, I was actually starting to enjoy getting hit. Like, it's a fucking mad feeling. Like, I wasn't mind, minding the bloody nose or the, the black eyes. You kind of get used to it. And it's like, I don't know if it's a sense of self-harming, but it felt fucking good. And that, the buzz after it was... Uh, I've never felt that buzz before. It's like a sense of achievement. Like you're pushing yourself through your fear and then when you achieve that, you feel amazing. Now I can understand why boxers keep it up. It's not just the fighting, it's the it's the exercise before it, it's the training before it that gives you that all-time high. And every the more I was doing it, the more I was enjoying it. And then you start feeling like a professional fighter. I started feeling like fucking Rocky. And... Uh, yeah, it was just a great experience, a great experience, like, I got offered this opportunity from Boxstar, it's like uh, so-called celebrities kind of thing, and I was the only Scottish guy fighting, so I fucking took it with both hands, I was getting paid right good money, I was co-main event, I was getting called into the ring with Michael Buffer, he's called some legendary fighters into the ring, listen, it was only four years ago I was in a crack den, Bang on the sniff, the booze, the weed, and I'd lost everything through gambling. Like, over the last four years, I've worked relentlessly to become a better person and, and cut the bad habits. But I've had a few wobbles along the way. Um, the first year, I tried to quit everything, hit a few speed bumps, but over the last three years, I've not touched one drink, not one drug, not placed one bet. And look at the results I'm achieving. Like, getting called out with Michael Buffer. A week after my fight, he was calling Tyson Fury out to fight Wilder. It's unbelievable. Like, I'm buzzing through that. Like, I just want to show people what can be done with believing in yourself. And sometimes when I speak, I might come across arrogant or cocky. But when you're low in confidence for 30-odd years and drinking and taking drugs to give you confidence, 
that's a fake confidence. Now I, I genuinely believe that like, anything I do, I'm the best at. I genuinely do. If I don't believe it, then how can anybody else believe it? I believe I'm the best podcast on this planet. I believe my documentaries are amazing. Like, I genuinely believe that. Whether it's only one person who believes that or everybody else, it, it's irrelevant. But understand that I've been through some fucking misery and pain where your own confidence, confidence and self-esteem, but when you start believing in yourself, a lot of people don't seem to like it, but that's their problem. Ask yourself why you don't like somebody else believing in themselves and talking highly of themselves because if I believe it enough, then I will bring it into existence. So even getting into the fight, the kid I was fighting was uh, taller, stronger, uh, bigger. He had fights before and fucking ripped, but I'm confident. I was confident. Like, every man thinks they can fight. Like, there's so many rockets on social media and YouTube and talk a good fight and say they're always going to batter people and say they're going to do this and do that, but never show up. Never show up. Like, the real fucking train and then just show up. I showed up, but no doubt, I had no doubt um, that I wasn't ever going to show up. Always, the self-doubt kicks in where you think you're going to get beat, of course, but overcome that to keep training hard and keep putting myself uh, through the pain and in the battle, but at the end of the day, I fucking won. Like, that's an unbelievable feeling after it. It's uh, an experience I'm glad I've done. I'm going to have another two fights next year. Like I say, I'm a businessman. I'm, I'm here to make money. I think I'm fighting a kid from America next year. If there's value in it, I'll take it. I've got kids to feed. The reason why I took this fight as well, I was getting paid top dollar to fight for a few rounds. Getting, fight, getting paid to train, getting paid to fight. And it promotes my brand. I met some amazing people as well who were also fighting. But to be Comey in an event for where I've came from for f four years ago to what I'm doing now is but I'm proud of myself. And even my podcast, I believe, changed lives. Like there's so much knowledge in there of people's lives and mistakes and trying to amend those mistakes to become better individuals. Like this is only the beginning for me. And over the last four years, it has been. Um, I just not constant battle with myself, but externally as well, because when you achieve goals, you want more. Like this is only the beginning for me to what I'm bringing to the table uh, with my content. I believe is going to be the best on the in the world. Some of these, I've only been doing this for just over three years. Remember, and to get to where I've got to, again, I'm, I'm proud of it, and I'm thanks for everybody who shows love and support towards it. It's amazing, like the support again. I've done 250 interviews, I've travelled nearly 100,000 miles over three years, like I've put in the graft and to get to where I am just now, it's not been easy, it's not just a case of I'm going to do this and do that, I believe in myself but I work harder than the rest to achieve something and that's it, like my actions will speak louder than my words, I've put it into action, my documentary, I've got my homeless documentary coming out again, um, next week we'll be raising money for um, Mel at Help for the Homeless in Glasgow who appeared in my homeless documentary they're the true heroes in my eyes like they're out every day saving lives and that's what it's all about is helping others and uh, sometimes I can forget that because I'm too caught up in my own achievements my own success and try to be bigger and better than I was yesterday but um, it shows what can be done people it shows what I, I'm going to be going global, I'm going to be taking things worldwide and where and just have to look what I've achieved over the last three, four years, everything I've said I've done, like, I work harder than everyone else, <clears throat> and I try my hardest to stay on the right path and uh, lead by example, like, it's just, uh, it's life in it, there's always ups and downs, there's always struggles, people, but you can better your life, like, I'm not saying I'm fucking this fucking person who's done this and done that and I'm just trying to lead by example from the mistakes that I've made in my life and and try to be a better individual that is tough though you're always going to be tested but the boxing thing kind of put us on an a even better path because it was a constant battle it was a mad experience and uh, I've got so much respect for any fighter or anybody who goes and has a tear up it uh, takes a, a bit of courage and it takes a lot of balls to knowing that you could get hurt. So my hat, I take my hat off to the people who do this for a living. Can you imagine getting into a world title fight and 
um, you, if you lose, you're potentially your career's damaged or you could get really hurt and that's a lot of pressure. I was only fighting a few rounds and uh, I felt great as well. I felt great the full 10 weeks. I felt confident. My ring entrance was about seven minutes so I just wanted to enjoy the experience. We had the kilts on and just wanted to enjoy it, embrace it to where I've came from, to what I was doing. Like, I never knew if it would ever happen again. I believe it will. We've got in talks with other people and I know other people throw names about but there's other names are no value to me. I'm in here to make money. I'm in here to provide for my family and and leave a legacy and that's exactly what I'm going to do whether you support me or not I couldn't really give a fuck like I'm in this to uh, create amazing content and kick on and keep improving I'll get another two fights next year I'm 37 I'm not daft but I can make money from this so why not like I, I respect like uh, Logan and Jake Paul like, for what they're doing just a couple of kids from America fighting Mayweather and possibly Mike Tyson that's unbelievable I'm not on their level I'm not daft but I can still make good money, I can still boost my platform and, and then show others what can be done. Anything is possible, everything is limitless, like, you can achieve anything and next year's only going to be an even bigger year for me, for what I'm going to bring to the table and the guests that I'm going to bring in. I believe some of this content is going to be the best the world has ever seen with the guests that I've got coming on. Some of those interviews that I've done are changing lives, like, people can understand that you're not alone, especially with the mental health thing. I struggled with mental health for many years because I took so much drink and drugs to numb the pain, to block out the pain. Plus, I had gambling in with that as well. I had that much pain that I'd try to mask it all with all the external bullshit. And then when you start cutting all that shit away, you start thinking clearer. Now I think clearer, so if I've got a plan, I'll go and achieve the plan I've set out to do. So... That is difficult. I'm living a clean life. I'm becoming successful. I'm doing well, but it doesn't mean you, your demons go away, your pain goes away. Every day is still a struggle to push on and, and keep achieving because it self-sabotage is easy as well. You just think, fuck this. It's easy to push the fuck it button and not care. It's easy to push the fuck it button and not bother your ass about trying to achieve anything. It's, that's an easy life. That, but for me, that's a weak life because you're never going to go anywhere like... It's, that would be scary to me is uh, lying in your deathbed and looking back at your life and thinking I never really gave it my full potential I never gave it my all right now I'm trying to give life my all I'm trying to become a better dad I'm trying to become a better uh, brother or son just in my surroundings my good people that if people fuck me over or talk shit I just cut them out I've not got time for bullshit like, that's for anybody watching man value your worth don't take shit from nobody be who you want to be but it's good to have a solid network and solid people around you but if they're not solid and, and get them to fuck man but you don't owe anybody anything in life and the only person that can change your life is you and that's what it's all about so for me it's just to keep kicking on keep raising the bar and my actions will speak for me what I'm doing and uh, like I say I'm not here to blow smoke up my own ass even if it might come across that way I want people watching understanding that you can't make something in your life. I never made these changes till I was 32. I was lying in a fucking crack then, just four years ago. On the sniff and the booze, not on the crack, but it was just, it's just, I made the changes. I wrote down what I needed to change and I changed and I'm still changing. I'm still a working process. Every day I think about having a drink or having a bet. Like, that doesn't go away, but I just don't act on those thoughts anymore. First obstacle I used to come to, or first problem, I used to go and drink the pain away. But I was just a fucking mess. Now it's different. Now I believe that I'm going to achieve whatever I set my mind to, and I am. But for doing that fight and for the amazing support that I've got is, is unbelievable. And I appreciate everybody that does support me and does uh, uh, shares my stuff and promotes it. It's amazing, like, what can be done. But as a fighting side of things, I'll do it again. Line them up. Like, I'll shy away from no fighting. That's not to act tough. I, I just know my capabilities. I know when I put my mind to something, I will train hard and... I won't shy away, never have, never will, like, but it's got to be right, the money's got to be right, and uh, I'll do it, I'll two fights next year, and uh, I just want to do the fitness thing again, and train hard, like, I was training twice a day, we were, we were doing this, uh, sparring in the morning, and then running at night, and I felt amazing, I felt alive, and the kid I was fighting was a good guy, man, like, he was a good guy, good fucking fighter as well, it was only a few rounds, like, I was doing eight rounds of three minutes, as well, so I felt good, 
it was sparring eight rounds of three, and then the, the fight was only three rounds, and I was I blew after the first round. I was fucked for some reason, but my coach says it was a uh, nervous energy because I felt calm. I felt really good, but obviously it's the build up. You're the second last fight, and um, you're there all night waiting. So so obviously your nerves are obviously getting the better of you. But anybody who's had a fight will tell you that what a buzz, what a feeling. That's why I want to do it again, and I will do it again. So uh, stay tuned for that. But I'm going to get the footage and put it up for people to watch and make your assumptions and, and judge and whatever. There's so many um, armchair professionals out there who's never had a fight in their life, no doubt will, will criticise, but that's fine, man. That's that's just the power of social media. But anybody that's willing to get in there and have a tear up, fuck me, man, you're tough. You're tough. But it's, uh, I'm doing it again. I'm definitely doing it again. I'm Great experience met so many great people and like I say get called out and Michael Buffers on another level and this is only the beginning people 2022 I'm just going to raise the bar again move through the gears and show what can be done but for everybody tuning in and uh, watches my stuff I can guarantee this is only the beginning for to watch the come thanks for the amazing support that I get and uh, keep believing in yourself and um, make the changes to better your life it's not easy but it can be done and uh, there's plenty of videos out there of people with inspiration that have changed their life and keep succeeding so i try to make this a short video but obviously i like talking but thanks again everyone and uh, i'll speak to you soon